Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to our video series on IGCSE Coordinated Sciences. This is Biology Unit 4.3. In today's lesson, we will be learning about animal nutrition. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Firstly for today, a balanced diet. You need to know what a balanced diet and malnutrition is. Firstly, balanced diet. A diet that consists of the proper amount, proper proportions, and proper types of food to maintain good health or for growth and meets the energy requirements of the individual. A balanced diet will differ for each individual, depending on age, sex, and even lifestyle. Males might need more carbohydrates and proteins due to their generally higher muscle mass. Females might need more iron during their menstruation periods. Pregnant women might need much more of all nutrients to supply enough for the growing baby. An athlete will need more energy nutrients than an office worker. A young teenage boy will need more energy nutrients than a senior citizen. Next, malnutrition. Lack of proper nutrition, this can be too low or too much caused by not having enough to eat, not eating enough of the right things, or being unable to use the food that one does eat. Protein Energy Malnutrition This is very typical. This is a lack of glucose and proteins in food. This can be lethal because energy is vital for life. It can lead to quashiorkor. The symptoms are an enlarged liver, thinning hair, distended or swollen abdomen. It can also lead to marasmus. This leads to emaciation. Now, micronutrient deficiency or hidden hunger. A lack of iron. This can lead to tiredness and lethargy. A lack of vitamin A. This can lead to a weakened immune system. A lack of iodine. This can cause swelling of the thyroid gland and damage to the brain. A lack of zinc. This can lead to growth and immunity failure. Moving on, overnutrition or obesity. This is the consuming of too many calories compared to used energy. It can lead to cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Lastly, overnutrition of vitamins and micronutrients. Vitamin overdose or poisoning can lead to toxic symptoms. Next, the digestive system. You need to know the different regions and their functions of the alimentary canal and the associated organs. First, the mouth, the site where the food enters the body through ingestion, and also the first site of digestion of food. The teeth allow mechanical digestion, and the saliva allows enzymatic chemical digestion. The salivary glands produce saliva containing amylase for carbohydrate digestion. The saliva is secreted into the mouth for chemical digestion. Saliva also helps lubricate the food. Next, the esophagus. The food pipe is made of muscular walls and connects the mouth and the stomach. The muscles contract to push the food into the stomach, this action is called peristalsis. When vomiting, the muscles move the other way, this action is called antiperistalsis. The cluster of food in the esophagus is called a bolus. Now, the stomach. This is the muscular organ of both mechanical and chemical digestion. The stomach produces gastric juice, which contains proteases and hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid kills most pathogens and the protease starts protein digestion. The low pH is also the optimum pH of the protease pepsin. The muscular walls also churn the food to digest it mechanically. The chyme, the digested food, and gastric juices are passed into the small intestine. Moving on, the pancreas. This is the organ producing pancreatic juice and other hormones. The pancreatic juices contain hydrolytic enzymes. These are carbohydrases, proteases, and lipases. Pancreatic juice is secreted into the small intestine. The pancreas also produces hormones controlling blood sugar levels. These are glucagon and insulin. Next we look at the liver. This is the organ that produces bile, and also responsible for removing glucose from the blood for storage. Bile is a liquid produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. It is connected by the bile duct. Bile is secreted into the small intestine. This contains basic chemicals to neutralize the acidity of the chyme, from the HCL. 
This is so that the pancreatic enzymes can work without denaturing, and to stop the acidity from attacking the intestine walls. Bile also acts as an emulsifier, allows fat molecules to form droplet suspensions in water. This increases the surface area for the lipase to work. The liver is also responsible for removing free glucose from the blood and storing them as glycogen. When the blood glucose levels are high, the pancreas produces a hormone called insulin, which signals the liver to take out glucose and store them as insoluble glycogen. When the blood glucose levels are low, the pancreas produces a hormone called glucagon, which signals the liver to convert the stored glycogen back into glucose. Now, the small intestine. This is the long organ composed of two parts, duodenum and ileum. The surface is covered with villi, these are microscopic structures used to increase absorption surface area. Bile and the pancreatic juice are secreted into the duodenum, the first part. Meaning that the duodenum contains all three main hydrolytic enzymes. The ileum is the longer and the latter section of the small intestine. Most of the nutrient absorption occurs here. Lastly, the large intestine. The final organ of the digestive system. The large intestine is comprised of the colon, which absorbs excess water. The rectum, which stores the fecal material before ingestion. The anus, the site of ingestion, or the removal of undigested food as feces. You need to know the definitions of the following words. Ingestion, taking substances into the body through the mouth. Ingestion, passing out of food that has not been digested as feces through the anus. Digestion, the breakdown of large and soluble food molecules into smaller water-soluble molecules by mechanical and chemical means. Assimilation, when digested food molecules glucose and amino acid are actually used by the body or becomes a part of the body. For example, glucose being used for respiration or amino acids being built into muscles. Now let's look at absorption of nutrients. You need to know that large molecules are digested so they can be absorbed through the small intestine walls. Absorption is the movement of the digested food molecules from inside the small intestine through the wall of the small intestine and into the blood system. You also need to know how the small intestine is designed for absorption. The small intestine has a very good blood supply and very thin lining structures called villi. You need to know the significance and the structure of the villi. A single villus is microscopic, and the villi cover the inner surface of the small intestine with uncountable numbers. This greatly increases the surface area compares to a flat surface and hugely increases absorption efficiency. An individual villus structure also has some characteristics useful for absorption. They have thin, one-cell thick walls, so it is easy for nutrients to diffuse through. There are blood capillaries near the surface to connect to the main circulatory system. The blood carries the dissolved glucose and amino acids. There are lacteals near the surface to connect to the lymph system. The lymph fluid carries glycerols and fatty acids. Now the teeth. You need to know the structure of the teeth. The teeth are divided into two main parts, the crown, the upper part, and the root, the part that is below the surface. The structure is divided further. First, enamel. This is the protective cover of the tooth and is the hardest substance in the body, calcium carbonate. Next, dentine. This is the region below the enamel that is the main bulk of the tooth. Now, the pulp cavity. This is soft tissue that fills the volume where the blood vessels and the nerves are situated. Next, the gum. This is a fleshy tissue that covers the bone and holds the tooth. Next, let's look at cementum. This is the part between the gum and the root dentine. Now, the nerve. These are nerve cells that allow the tooth to have a response. Lastly, the blood vessel. This provides nutrients for the intersections of the tooth. You also need to know how teeth decay. Tooth decay is when the tooth structures, like enamel, dentine, and the cementum, are damaged. Some leftover sugars are stuck in the teeth. There are also some bacteria on the surfaces of the teeth that form plaque. Plaque is the film of bacteria and saliva on the surface of the teeth. The bacteria digest the sugar and respire, excreting plaque acid. The acid attacks the enamel, and consequently the inner parts of the teeth. The deeper it goes into the teeth, especially near the nerves, the more it hurts. The syllabus says you should be able to, so check if you can. State what is meant by the term balanced diet and describe a balanced diet related to the age, sex, and activity of an individual. Describe the effects of malnutrition in relation to starvation, coronary heart disease, 
constipation, and obesity. Define ingestion. Define digestion. Identify and describe the functions of the main regions of the alimentary canal and associated organs. Describe the role of the liver in the metabolism of glucose. Outline the role of bile in emulsifying fats to increase the surface area for the action of enzymes. Define digestion. State where, in the alimentary canal, amylase, protease, and lipase enzymes are secreted. State the functions of a typical amylase, a protease, and a lipase, listing the substrate and end products. Define absorption. Identify the small intestine as the region for the absorption of digested food. Describe the role of fat as an energy storage substance. Describe the significance of villi in increasing the internal surface area of the small intestine. Describe the structure of a villus, including the role of capillaries and lacteals. Identify the types of human teeth and describe their structure and functions. State the causes of dental decay and describe the proper care of teeth. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.